Hi everyone, Paul from Canadian Woodworks here. In this video, we're gonna do a little bit something different than woodworking. We're gonna be talking about how I created this 40 foot long shipping container pool. We're gonna go through the steps of digging the hole, getting the container, sandblasting some of the rust, pouring concrete on the inside of the container, fabricating the shallow end, which is actually in the center of the pool. And finally, epoxy pool painting, reinforcing with fiberglass, hooking up all the pool components, a standard filter, pump, UV light. So hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, let's get to it. So we had to dig a hole. Fortunately, we have a mini excavator on site with the lumber company. So no issues there. The deck is about five feet tall, so we needed to dig the hole about three feet, three feet a little bit more. We decided to add a bunch of aggregate on the underside. That way the container wouldn't be like sitting in water, I guess, when it rained. At least that's my thinking, my theory. So uh, this went pretty well. Then we had to move the actual container. I had already purchased this container and had it dropped off here, and it sat there for a long, long time. And finally, uh, this is Ken. He moves a lot of our lumber. And um, I said, next time you're around and you're moving some of our lumber, if you could please move the shipping container into the hole. And he's like, what are you talking about? What are you doing? Um, told him I'm doing a pool. So good evening, everyone. We are moving a 40 foot shipping container with the help of Titanic Trailer Services. There's Ken, the man himself. Look at that. It's on the trailer. All right, success, we've made it. We've uh, driven down the little ramp. I didn't know if I had it angled enough, but I guess everything's all good. They're just disconnecting it from the trailer now, and then we're gonna be tilting it and dropping it in the hole. Touchdown. All right, so here we are, progress update. The hole was dug, we put in about eight inches of really large aggregate, then about another inch or two of smaller, about one inch stuff. The first stuff was around six inch, thinking if water goes in the hole, at least it won't like fill up all the way up to the shipping container before it has time to just naturally drain away. We didn't do any drain tiles, anything like that. We had the container dropped in there from a friend of mine that moves these containers for a living. We then went ahead and poured a three inch thick layer of concrete. We do have steel mesh in the concrete. Now here is the problem. This is a full size 40 foot shipping container, full height as well. Most shipping container pools that you see um, are not the full height. They cut them down halfway or they're also 20 footers. So the problem is this wall, this is an open top. So I didn't have to cut this top off. It already comes like this, no top added. Really nice bulkhead on the top also. But the issue is the the wall here can bow very easily because there's not too much strength in it. So you can see we still have this one stretcher that goes across. This came with all these stretchers that go on these nubs and then a tarp goes over the top. That's how they would use this. Now, uh, obviously I want an open top so you could swim across the whole top and I don't want any things across. So we decided to do a shallow end right in the center of the pool and it will be about 10 feet long and about uh, three feet down i have some marks right here where uh, this will be the top of the shallow end and then these are the parts we went with a three inch by three inch angle iron this will be on the inside and that'll be flat against the wall like this and then the bottom will come out like so and at first i was just going to weld it right to the side but then i was worried about uh, the weld just holding just because this is the material is not crazy thick so we decided uh, we're going to bolt right through and on the opposite outside face we have a quarter inch thick eight inch wide plate just to kind of disperse the pressure so we're going to obviously mimic that on the other side as well and in between the two will be three inch by three inch square tube uh, four pieces really uh, nice thick stuff i think this angle iron's quarter inch also so quarter inch tube and then some decking on top of the tube the tube itself will be welded uh, sealed the ends will be fully sealed to the angle iron. And uh, that's it, sounds simple. So that should hold the pressure from 
the water uh, buckling out the sides. This was the test with the sandblaster. Uh, we have a pressure washer. That's the pressure washer there, 4,000 PSI. It does have a heater on it as well. It can do like steam pressure washing, but I'm not using the, the heater. And we got the sandblaster attachment for it from Easy Clean. This here is the sandblaster attachment, of course, uh, already rusty, but uh, this just goes on the tip of the wand and then it has an end here that goes in the bucket of sand or some type of vessel that's you know holding your sand. So you can wet blast with this. See, I tell you right here. Sandblast kits. So I figured out the height I want the angle iron and basically I've marked every spot I'm going to be drilling a hole and I'm just going to drill a smaller pilot hole which goes through the angle iron and through the flat plate. The flat plate will be on the outside of the container and the uh, angle will be on the inside. I'll then hold the angle iron up on the wall where I want it, mark those two holes, those two pilot holes, the small holes, and then I'll increase all those holes up to half an inch. That way I should be able to bolt the two pieces through the shipping container just like that. And then from there, I can drill all the remaining ones horizontal here, uh, everything kind of attached. Uh, so the three inch by three inch angle iron um, basically pre-drilled a hole here and one at the opposite end right on the ground and then matched it up to this drilled through here it was also matched to the flat bar that's on the outside an eight inch wide flat bar on the outside and now we're just drilling the next holes and basically this is what i literally i'm one of those guys i have a, a drawer of drill bits We've got the pilot hole drilled here, so we're just going to keep going up in sizes. So I go whatever size that is, whatever size that is, whatever size this is, and then finally half an inch. Definitely a workout. We're just using a hand drill, nothing magnetic, nothing fancy. Um, just your DeWalt drill. I'm going to put a bolt um, at each one. Why not, right? All the stress is on those bolts, so there we go. A whole bunch of holes to drill, and then it'll be rinse and repeat on the opposite side. Oh, fortunately, this is my ceiling. Half inch bolt, half inch washer. Hopefully this. Throw it again. You don't even get it on camera. Throw it again. You don't even get it on camera. You half inch it. bolt, half inch washer over top. All right, Hammer Dinas, jump in. Come some laps. See my nuts, hun? Hurry up. What? No. Sure. What do you think so far? Yeah, that's right. Good review. Five star. All right, so here we go. Progress has been made. We got the three inch by three inch angle iron bolted uh, right through the container at each one of those ribs where it uh, contacts. See, there's a gap here. So on the outside, I have a piece of eight inch wide, uh, quarter inch flat plate that all these bolt through. So identical on both sides. And now we've cut this three inch by three inch tube uh, to length. This is pretty thick. I think it's quarter inch. It might even be thicker. And then we're going to have probably HDPE or some sort of composite as a decking for the shallow end. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to start welding these ends and I don't want any uh, water getting into the end of the tube. So I do want it fully sealed all the way around. The I just got it all cleaned up. Just have a standard 
Just have a standard, you know, Canadian Tire Special, Lincoln Electric. What is this, a MIG Pack 180? I do have the gas on it. It's not windy today, and I have the doors closed in the container, so we should be good. It's gonna do a couple test welds right here, and then I'm just going to uh, get to it, really. And uh, we're looking good. Let's get right in there. That is definitely what I'm after. Nice penetration, nice heat, fully sealed up. Stacking dimes. I don't think so though. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna, uh, got a lot of welding to do. Okay, second side's been welded. Definitely great penetration, nicely sealed up, no complaints all around. Um, I haven't welded in a long time and I didn't know how I was gonna work on this like really long extension cord, the welder. But she's doing really good. And like I said, it doesn't have a huge duty cycle, so I don't think I could just hammer down on every single one. In fact, in my opinion, once I'm done even welding this full end, I kind of notice a bit of a difference when it comes up to the last weld. But uh, overall, she's doing a good job. So I'm gonna clean up the end of another one, get it in position, and then I will uh, weld that one also. Okay, getting a little knack at the welding now, speed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this side here, I went up the weld, all the way around there. But then on this side, I actually went down the weld. I actually stopped right close to the bottom just to see what was going on. It was definitely harder to see, but the weld does look better. All done, all welded on. We got the three inch by three inch square tube going across, um, fully welded on. Um, this is why we did the angle iron because of the amount of welding surface. And at first I was just gonna weld the angle iron onto the container, but I thought bolting it through uh, would be much stronger connection. So we have a piece of steel on the outside that these bolts go through, kind of make a sandwich of the container. And basically when the water goes in, you know, this wall is pushing this way, this wall is pushing that way. So in theory, the pressure or the, you know, the strain on the container actually evens itself out. Cause this one wants to go that way, that one wants to go this way. So I think as long as these are strong enough, which I believe they are, um, there should be no issues. So we're all welded up. All right, let's see what's going on. This is the pressure washer we used with a sandblasting attachment. And um, after doing a bunch of reading, I basically sandblasted all the sketchy, rusty spots. And then that was uh, uh, rusty, basically. And then I applied the epoxy pool paint to just those spots. I also sandblasted the bottom basically six inches, as well as the concrete and we are reinforcing this bottom seam with, um, I guess, fiberglass mat that's compatible with epoxy. So you can see down here, you can see the piece of mat. It's not the prettiest, but I think after a few more layers of epoxy, it won't be too, too bad. Um, just really concerned about the expansion and contraction of the steel to the concrete, so I really felt like we needed some sort of reinforcement there. This was done yesterday and things are looking nice. Nice, 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 and um, yeah, you can see we're, we're pretty blue, we're pretty blue. Okay, here's the top view of the shipping container. So you can see the red on the outside versus the blue that's on the inside. Obviously the blue is that epoxy pool paint. And this is an open top 40 foot shipping container. Now the person that I bought it from was already using it as a pool with a liner. And the issue that he came across was once you fill it with water, the center, the center of the shipping container here and here wants to buckle out. In fact, it actually broke in the center and started leaking water on him. So I knew I wanted a shallow end. And yes, normally a shallow end is at one end of the pool and then you have a deep end. But I needed to brace the center of the container from basically ripping itself apart and just breaking in half here and here. I put an eight inch wide flat bar, quarter inch, and we we're bolted through the angle iron on the inside. And this way I'm dispersing all that pressure. And theory is, you know, that side wants to go this way. This side wants to come this way. So they should just counteract the forces. I did use like extremely beefy steel down here. The angle iron's really, really nice because you got a lot of weld points on here. So this is gonna be the shallow end. I'm still deciding on what decking I'm gonna use. Obviously it's gonna be underwater. Um, as a woodworker, we use HDPE for epoxy stuff and I have three quarter inch sheets of HDPE, which I'll probably use as the decking. All right, now we are in the pool. 
It looks really nice when it was blue. It seemed like a never ending project when this was still red, but as soon as we started getting this thing blue, uh, we were moving along nicely. We started applying that fiberglass mat right here along this back edge, which does have a much, uh, much more drastic corrugated edge versus the side. And at first, um, dummy me, I know I've worked with fiberglass cloth before. Um, when we left it as a long strip, it really bunched up. So you can see here, bunch, 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 it's all bunched up. So we started cutting strips. So right about here, we stopped with a, a single like piece. This was a six inch wide piece that kind of, you know, you poke it here and it moves over here. So it's kind of a disaster. So we cut strips out of it and now you can see how much nicer the fiberglass went down. And the reason being, we poured a three inch thick concrete in the bottom of the container. That's gonna isolate you from the very bottom plywood that's like, you know, there's chemicals in that plywood. So that's sealed from the plywood. Also probably watertight as well. Obviously we epoxy painted it. Uh, but I was worried about this steel flexing, you know, when the water goes in, also heat changes, stuff like that. Probably right at this seam, uh, water could eat pretty easily get underneath, which I really, really did not want to do. So we can get right in here. We can see the strips. And basically we painted on the epoxy we then put uh, the fiberglass cloth and then painted on a little bit more epoxy. Next day, I did do another coat of epoxy over it. So uh, it's, uh, it worked out really, really well. Um, I'm super interested to see how this worked. I did fully sandblast this metal uh, where the, where the um, fiberglass cloth was attaching. So we'll see, hopefully that holds up well. That worked out really well. Better details of the shallow end. So we have three by three angle iron which this is three by three tube, which gives you a lot of welding surface, which is really, really nice. These are thick too. I don't I think this is three eighths even. Definitely quarter inch, might even be three eighths. I think this is quarter inch. Um, and then these are the bolt heads that go right through to the opposite side. So uh, fairly simple on the shallow end, although it seemed like it took me forever to uh, get this all fabricated and actually get going on it. And as we walk to the other end, Da -da -da. Soon I'll be swimming right here. Swim, swim, swim. Ow! Oh, I just hit my head. Oh, that was the worst one yet. Oh, I'll see if I cut that out of the video. So it has been raining here, so I've been having to chop back the water out. So that's why this is in here. And uh, I have a big giant fan that helps dry uh, the surface, especially at the door. Now, this is obviously the most complicated area where it's going to leak. And we have a wide center seam here, which you can see the fiberglass cloth. So this is how wide it was, six inches. And same thing, paint on the epoxy pool paint, put your fiberglass on and then paint uh, that fiberglass, let it cure. Over these seams, I did do two layers of cloth. So we're looking, you know, this was about an inch wide. I'm fairly confident. Um, it's also not fully cured that this is gonna hold well. And also because, Oh man, now I bump into the fan. Um, the person before that owned this container, he, did, he didn't weld the doors or anything and they held fine with the water that was in it. So it, they did leak the way he had it. But uh, so the strength of the door, I'm not concerned about. Maybe there'll be a little bit of flex. So we'll see how this holds up. We also did uh, this seam as well. Basically all the seams, like we had to seal up all these seams with the fiberglass cloth. A little bit of a nightmare up here. Again, we just used strips, but about, about uh, we would cut, so you can see this mat six inches wide. We would cut strips about here, here, and it would supply one strip at a time. It is definitely slow going and a lot of work, but uh, obviously water will find any little pinhole, especially as you get lower in the pool, you're gonna have all this weight of the water pushing down. So at the bottom, if you have a pinhole, it's gonna just, you know, I don't know, it'd be like a little sprinkler outside, I suppose. So obviously the very bottom seam was super, super important. So I really, really, um, made sure to seal this up. We got two layers of fiberglass cloth down there. So epoxy, cloth, epoxy, epoxy, cloth, epoxy. I'm gonna wrap this video up here. This is gonna be part one, possibly part two, part three coming soon. As you can see, we did get the pool fully filled with water. I got all my filtration installed. The shallow end was finished. We got a little deck, railing, ladder, solar blanket. Now that I say it out loud, it's a lot of work. From digging the hole, to putting the shipping container here, to finally swimming in it, 
it was a lot, a lot of work. And I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. I got some small leaks that uh, in part two we'll talk about. We'll talk about how I've tried to fix them and moving forward with uh, the second season with the shipping container pool. Thank you so much for following along. Thanks for uh, checking out the video. Maybe you want to subscribe to my channel. Maybe you want to like this video. Maybe you want to throw a comment. All those things you're supposed to do. So please do it. <laughs> Everyone have a great one.